Hello everybody, welcome to Live Scribbles with Jonathan. You can check out my website and my work at jonathanrector.com. And if you guys wanted to head on over to patreon.com slash jonathanrector, you can uh, head over there and there's all kinds of goodies you guys can check out on your own. Uh, I don't like to, excuse me, spam all that stuff, but uh, I do like to bring it up from time to time. So check it out. There's uh, some commissions, some sketches, uh, some one-on-one -on -one time uh, on Google Hangouts. Uh, there's some... Just by being a Patreon member, if you're into Manga Studio, there's some pencils and some inking things there. Um, and there's things changing all the time and things adding all the time. And uh, I, I did want to make an announcement here with you guys now because I know there's people in the chat. Hey, everybody. I want to uh, thank you to everybody that's here. If this is your first time here to the show or if you are watching on YouTube, this show is every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and usually about a half hour before the show, sometimes 15 minutes. Uh, we just sort of sketch and do some stuff. Uh, the pre-show, like I like to call it, with some music and, uh, and stuff like that. But... Um, I'm going to, if you guys have heard this uh, challenge that's gone around uh, for comics, uh, I most likely think it's been started by Kevin Cross called The 100 uh, Days of Making Comics. Essentially, you take a half hour out of your day just for personal projects. Now, it might sound silly and goofy, but it's basically just getting habits started and stuff. So I figured I would start doing that. Um, and I'm going to figure out how the videos are going to go with that. Um, and it's going to go on Patreon first. So if you guys are on Patreon, um, you guys will be able to look forward to that if that's interesting to you. And then probably about, I don't know, a month later, uh, I'll release the videos uh, as they sequentially come out on YouTube and stuff. So you guys can check that out as well. Um, but I just wanted to say it. We'll get more into it later uh, as we actually do it. I think I did start uh, 100, yeah, somebody's asked in the chat, uh, 100 days um, last year as well, I believe. And I started recording it, and then I stopped recording. I did do it. I just stopped recording it because it was taking, the, the process of recording was is pretty balls. Uh, if if you like the thing is it's say like the the ideology behind it is a half hour, but you can totally do what you can afford time-wise, right? And And the problem is that, the recording and uploading and stuff, that could take 10, 15, 20 minutes. Now it's not 30 minutes anymore, right? Now it's it's kind of getting gross. So uh, I believe Kevin's even doing something now where he sort of like takes notes and then batches the whole thing together in like groups of 10 days or something. So we'll figure that out. Um, but what we're going to do today is... Um, just so you guys know, in the pre-show here, like this Colossus here um, and this really lame-faced <laughs> Cyclops, what I'm doing today, I figured I haven't really done a video like this in a long time. I'm not sure if I have. And I haven't really seen too many other people do it. And I think it's kind of interesting, hopefully. Um, some of you guys, you guys won't probably get anything out of this. So I apologize. Uh, this is all for me. And what I'm going to do today, uh, the last 15 minutes, we will do a critique session because you guys dig that and I really enjoy that. So get your stuff ready if you want something uh, critiqued. By all means, uh, get that ready. And at the end of the show, we'll get that started. But what uh, I'll be doing today is uh, a study session. I figured for the next, I, I like to start my day with like a 10, 15 minute study session or before I go to bed if I can. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. So this art that I'm actually going to be studying is from an artist, uh, a Japanese, I believe he's, or maybe, I'm not sure his nationality, uh, but he goes by a bunch of different names. He's a Capcom artist. Uh, that's what he's probably most known for here in America, is Bengus, B-E-N-G-U-S, or Gouda Chi, sometimes he's known. He's done a lot of Street Fighter work. And this sort of art here is um, pinups for the Marvel versus Capcom, if you guys ever played that way back in the day. Uh, if you guys remember the art on there, it was just, sick like a lot of the Capcom art honestly it influenced a lot of where I went in the sort of style that I like and uh, you know even as far back as I'd say two years ago I would uh, there was Street Fighter 4 came out something crazy like six or seven years ago and I and I still remember uh, buying that game obviously and just having the characters do cool positions, like Ryu, Ken, Zangief, all these guys, just pressing pause and drawing what was there. And I used to do that as a kid, uh, way back on like Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it's, I, I think it's very important, and I don't know if any of you guys, maybe some of you feel this, um, maybe more than the average people, uh, you always feel like you might get caught up in wanting to do your personal projects and comics and all that cool stuff. But uh, there, there should always be time for study. And sometimes if, if you're so busy 
you don't get a chance to study anymore and it's sort of like your learning happens while you're drawing comic pages um, and for me it's like I always like to th there is something to be said to always go back to anatomy like proper anatomy we'll say uh, but for me the way I like to look at it and th I still have a long way to go with my art um, but the way that I look at it is when you start to study anatomy from like the traditional sources that most people recommend like Loomis, Bridgman um, Burn Hogarth to a degree and some other cats like that uh, eventually you, you sort of learn like the shorthand ways to get what you feel across um, I'm not I don't like to copy what people are doing a hundred percent I like to see with my eyes and draw with my hand right like how my brain's gonna relate that information to my hand to the drawing uh, I find is different but there are those people out there that are, are that like to do like let's say character not characters but like um, portraits and things where they will look at a person or, or something and they'll draw realistically. I'm not one of those people. I, I, I can appreciate it, but I can't do that. I just don't have the, the patience, to be honest with you, to line everything up perfectly. So in these study sessions, and the other thing too is this is, in my opinion, how you build up your style as well, is you have to start looking at the in things that influence you. Um, and, and you start to funnel it through your own eyes and your own vision you know, of what you like and usually you don't copy just an artist there's a few artists that you like or cartoons or animation and things um, so the idea here is I'm not necessarily looking to copy a hundred percent what I'm seeing I'm just trying to see what my brain's gonna look at and take away from all this and th that's basically what my study sessions are if I can I like to do this like I say every day and it's very hard to find the time to do it because it really is there's there's no there's nothing that you get out of it immediately so if you're doing your own prom or projects and comics you can do these pages and stuff right and like there's panels getting done and the books getting done but when you're doing studies like anatomy or studying other artists uh, learning new tools that's the 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 big rock that you're slowly pushing and the more you do it the more momentum and you figure out certain ways to like attempt to get at that boulder right that's a horrible analogy but it's that thing that pays off in the long run when you're not even noticing it and if you ever find that your style maybe is a little a little wonky or you wish you had a little bit more style you know it's such a a word that gets thrown around a lot uh, i highly recommend doing doing lots of studies lots and lots of studies when you're able to and and actually square away time to do so It'll help you out in the long run. Um, so we're doing just some some anatomy here. Uh, I definitely uh, Bengus his art is 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 amazing. I love it. I've been a, a fan like, like I say since I can really remember. Uh, the, there was something about it that was it was a comic book style, especially for Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, it was a, a comic book style for sure, but it was different. And uh, when I grew up, here we go. Uh, I think dial up internet. I got that, and it was sort of around when I was in about grade, I don't know, I want to say grade 9, like starting high school, somewhere around there. Uh, so there wasn't like anything going on with, like I couldn't find up, you know, um, these pictures that you can obviously do today. Um, so I had to find ways of, like when something new like this would come across my my my, my eyes, it was like, holy hell, where, where's this been? This is so fresh. And I don't know if you guys have ever felt that. I, I still feel that way with manga, with comics, um, Japanese comics or just European comics. Basically anything that's not North American comics. There's something usually, or even indie comics, there's something not saturated about it. Uh, either whether it's ideas, dynamics, panel placement, stuff like this, just all sorts of things that just make it visually appetizing to keep getting more and more and uh, this artist here I had no idea what his name was um, I just knew there was something about I like what I saw I liked and uh, as time's gone on uh, I've stumbled into another artist named Joe Matarera which I really honestly hope a lot of you guys look at his stuff and it might not be your thing but um, there's there's no denying that he's Oh, you guys want to see example? Okay, here, I'll actually, well, I guess for the stream here. Here, let me just bring this on here. We'll just quickly go through here. What I'm drawing right now is a Cyclops head. And these are, like, this art here is from, uh, you know, a very long time ago. 
this sort of stuff. But there's uh, there's something cool to this. It's very simple, um, but there's little things again that I'm I'm trying to pick up from that are there. Like uh, if you guys notice, like again where I was going with that was Joe Matarera. I he had this amazing art, and then down the road I find out that you know like Bengus influenced him and so many other people. And you start to look at the people that you look up to, like even Bengus, and like who are the people he looked up to? You know, like how far back can you go? Um, so I'm hoping like a lot of this guy, like if you guys haven't experienced this guy, uh, and this is your first time seeing this artist, like look at this Thanos, like oh, it's amazing stuff. But if this is your first time seeing this kind of work, uh, I hope it turns you on in the same way creatively that it did did for me as well. Um, when this was the stuff that I could look at before I even had anatomy books or or anything like that. Um, this is a new guy that came on for Street Fighter Four. Uh, I for, I forget this this artist's name, but I really like his style as well. Like, I'm I kind of like his anatomy a little bit more uh, than Bengus, but uh, like even the females and stuff, it's very anime. There's like a you know an anime look to it, but. Um, I don't know. There's there's a magic to it, and I think that <laughs> that just comes from uh, you know a little bit of fanboyism. Like if there's something you see in somebody's art, you usually always like that artist, right? Um, so I could j here. Let's just put this here. I actually put the wrong thing in here. Let's put uh, Bengus, and I'll just quickly scroll some through some stuff, then we'll get to drawing. Uh, Brett Strong is saying, I have really been digging the simplified comic styles lately and have been moving more in that direction. Uh, preach it, bud. I, I think there's something about the 90s art of rendering and shadowing that I, I still love to this day, and I think a lot of people do. Uh, but when it comes to working, uh, to be absolutely honest, there's, and I see this popping up a lot more of just this, I don't even want to say simple, but like, I don't know how to describe it. Open line style, not really rendering. You're letting the coloring, to a degree, do a lot of the talking for you. Um, and I, I absolutely love it. I, I prefer to look at this stuff more often. Like, look at this Wolverine. Like that. This is amazing stuff. And so here's like a, a page from Joe Matarera. Uh, you might see little bits and pieces, but like again. You know, this is sort of like, if you ask me, like, Bengus, that style of stuff, uh, and Joe adds the comic book style to it, and, and if that was, uh, you know, and this is what I kind of dig as well, like, shadowing and rendering is awesome, you know, there's a weight to it, it is a style, it's a very interesting illustration style, um, but when you can start to get, like, even this old, like, Akuma drawing, you know, like, and you can kind of add that in there, that's what's where I want to be going, and I've always talked about this for a while. Like even his Psylocke, amazing. Look at this; it's beautiful. Faces are simple, and again, uh, I was kind of going there as well, uh, talking about uh, anime faces. I'm not really opposed to it, you know. Like there's still some really good stuff in there. I don't know. Uh, let's just keep drawing and, and see where we go. Uh, Peter Nugent, yeah, I know this is a different different artist. He's not a Capcom artist, I don't think. Good old Rolento. Oh, Diego Aquino, that's the name of the artist um, that we were looking at before. Like, even this is so simple, and yeah, look, it's anime, you know? But, uh, I don't know. There, there's, there's a freshness here. Like, I don't get to see this stuff in comic books. Uh, like if I could grab a, a Incredible Hulk comic that looked like this, or um, a Spider-Man comic, anything that was kind of like that, I, I think I would gravitate to it just a little bit more than usual because I'm not seeing that really anywhere else. Okay, and I don't want to beat a dead horse here with that, but anyway, so let's get back to it here. Uh, I kind of switched pictures. Uh, let's see if we can get this one going. A little bit of a Ryu. And I'll probably probably be saying, by all means, guys, if you guys have questions, please ask it in the chat in all capitals. Um, but most likely, I'll be repeating a lot of the same stuff while I'm drawing this. But, uh, yeah, so I'm trying to look at ways of doing, like, shorthand, picking up on the style. This, I can show you, say right now, uh, even Ryan Otley, love that guy's art. 
You guys have heard me talk to him, about him to death. Uh, I've noticed he does this too with the eyes, where like they break up the eyes. Like he'd go like maybe something like this, and then you put the bottom of the eye, and you can kind of get the eye going in here like this, you know, and then you get your eyebrow and, and stuff like that. That's really cool. I'm I'm more used to drawing like eyes, like I suppose a little. It's not really geomatish, but like there's there's more detail to it, and it's just cool seeing this sort of open eye, eyes. I don't know how else to say it open eye style um, and it just broadens your your ability to I guess free yourself from your own style in a way and expand on it and hopefully get you to like the spot that you'd, you'd like to go um, Un is asking uh, how much did you pay for your first comic uh, US not CAD uh, I'm from Canada I it was actually a quarter and I can tell you why. I really only got into comics by chance. It wasn't, you know, I could look at stuff and I, I, I didn't really seek it out. I was definitely more into video games and video game art. There was just, again, more, I don't know, I found there was just a little something cooler in there. Uh, but my mom took us to a comic book store and it was a Jim Lee comic. I don't even know what the hell it was. It was uh, the the traditional one you guys have probably seen. I know it's everywhere now. Well, like it's been for a while. It's like a double page spread, and the cover would be here, X Men, and it's got the big circle with Magneto here, and then you've got all the X Men and Xavier over here, and they're all like fighting him. I don't know why. I think it might have been a promotion that uh, Marvel was doing at the time. Uh, but the guy had boxes and boxes of them, and they're all a quarter each. So I remember buying like three or four because <laughs> I had a dollar, you know. And that was, I mean, there were so many of them, it was ridiculous. And I, I ripped the covers up and cut them out. And, you know, it was just something like I think kids do. It's not about, I, you know, I, I don't really think it's about collecting. And uh, when I have kids one day, you know, like, and I take them to the comic book store, I want them to rip the shit out of comic books. I want them to draw on them. I want them to just get creative with it. You know, don't, I, I'm not a fan of, now that I'm, gr that I'm grown up, Definitely, there's a collector mentality and stuff like that. You can appreciate things a little differently. But um, I don't know. When you're a kid, it's like find whatever way that gets you creative and get those juices flowing. I remember ripping up coloring books, uh, Ninja Turtle ones, taking them to my dad's work where he had a, uh, a Xerox printer. And I would, since I cut out the Ninja Turtles, I could put them on the Xerox screen and print it and it would make like my own coloring book kind of thing, right? And I would make my own stories with that stuff and then I would take it home the next day and color it. And, and that's the stuff, right? Like if, if uh, you have a kid or, you know, whoever has kids or even do it now, whatever, you don't, you don't have to be a certain age to do that. Just cut up comic book pages and then like cut out Spider-Man from here, here and there and just piece them together to make your own comic. I know it sounds lame, but uh, when you're a kid, that's the shit. Because when you're a kid, you know, like, drawing all that stuff takes way too much time. Ugh. He's got time to draw all that. The posters, yeah. So, Bengus, when I started looking at his stuff, I noticed, um... I'm not sure necessarily if Joe Mad heavily looked at this guy or if it's just the anime hair in general but I always really dug the hair on anime characters like this where it's not uh, and, and I have a, a huge tendency to do this when I get into inking and stuff where you'll go in there and like I'll start doing this sort of stuff where you're adding lines to build it up and it's fine but there's also something that's just to say where you just kind of add darks to like the line weights and it just has a different feel to it So this is, I think, Street Fighter Alpha. But, like, right here, like, I can already see, like, even if it's just the eye and stuff, if I were to change that eye and give it more of, like, how I would draw an eye today, like, watch. Everything else still works. And that's where I want to learn, like, just the simplified forms of all this stuff. So we can change this here to... A little bit more like how I would draw an eye. And you can see, like, it still, it still works. And... Personally, it doesn't look as anime-ish. It could, or manga-ish. But you can go ahead and just see, like, this is where you can start adding in your your other styles that you like. You know, like, if you like all that rendering and all that cool stuff. 
and it's really just adding more lines right but this is where like you start combining styles right and you get new appreciation for how to draw forms and, and different things um, I actually had a conversation with a friend uh, and <laughs> friends are allowed to have opinions right <laughs> of whatever they want uh, but he was saying that uh, I draw way too much like cartoony characters so like this what we're drawing today and I really need to get I should get back to drawing like Loomis and life drawing because uh, I'm I'm my figure work is getting a little out of whack and what he was saying and he, and he wasn't critiquing like the fact that you know like I can I can draw um, a person relatively good to the point where it could look realistic but it's not perfect and I've already told you and I've told my friend I, I don't like looking and drawing life drawing still life stuff I, I can't do that it, it bothers me <laughs> Okay, I can see life everywhere. I don't want to be able to just draw life in my head. That's why I gravitate towards this stuff, and I'm, I'm assuming most of you cats do as well. Whether it's video games or whatever it is your poison is, uh, if it's in the art field, th there's an, a little bit of an escapism there, right? And he was just going on about saying how, like, how, what I was drawing was just, it's it's not good. And and I didn't know where this was coming from or what, what the point is that he was trying to say. And it was just like, there's a lot of this this venomous hate because like what I'm or what I have been doing for a while is just been like I guess quotes here air or comics you know and and, and that style is not whatever and it just got me thinking about like like I, I didn't really t he's my friend so I'll I'll take what he's saying with a grain of salt but I like I really didn't give it much thought um, I just thought it was weird and I'm like trying to think like so what is what is style like it's so like who you look at and who you talk to. Some people look at Alex Ross and it's just like disgusting. Ugh. I'd rather see cartoons than like his kind of stuff. And then you get people that look at like, you know, this stuff and it's like, ugh. Give me the Alex Ross back. This guy can't draw. <laughs> anyway, so we got Ryu here. Anyway, like I was saying, like there's little shorthand things like I actually really like how um in the the art here, the preview art, how he drew like the bicep kind of coming up like this. It's going into the trice or the biceps there, and then you know you get your tricep back here, and the shoulders are in this really cool floppy kind of thing up here. And again, you know, like you just let's go ahead and add some rendering to it if if that's like you know the style we want to kind of go for, and just really round out these forms back here. Right, like this. This is, this is the study stuff. It's figuring things out, just letting your mind, you know, like riff off of one thing to the next. All right, let's grab another one. Uh, Okina is asking, why is it every time you talk about cartoony styles or anime and manga styles, you sound like you look down on it? Uh, I apologize that, like, I actually, it's the opposite. I adore it. I wish I had the balls to commit to it. <laughs> like spend a year to two years to just learn to draw anime again, to be absolutely honest with you. Um, uh, unfortunately, well, I don't want to say unfortunately because it's not a bad thing. W how my career is going and has gone, people that uh, hire me for work, I, there's a certain style, you know, like a certain comic book style that I do enjoy uh, that they, they, they hire me for, but personal work is where I get to experiment more with this stuff so that I can slowly bring it into that. Um, so, again, cartoony, uh, especially cartoony and manga styles, I want more of that in my life and my drawing. Uh, so, uh, I apologize if what I'm saying sounds like it's coming off the opposite way, but um, couldn't be further from the truth. I'm a big proponent for it. There's beauty in its uh, simplicity. So let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here for the searches. Here we got Bengus. Let's put uh, Capcom. Maybe we should draw some some females. We don't really draw too many of the, too many of the ladies.
So we've got a little Chun Li action. Let's try to do some face studies. So we're just trying to figure out the placement here, um, and then we can worry about details and stuff. I've always had this habit of drawing the nose first. I'm trying to break that and get into the um, drawing eyes first and then figuring out everything after that. Uh, Brett Strong is saying, do you prefer to draw sequential pages or pinups? Uh, if you look at my stuff, it's all mostly pinups. I prefer... <laughs> it's, it's a tough question. I would say pinups just because of the simplicity with them and you can do more of them uh, but I really do enjoy doing comic pages because it lets me uh, tell this tell better stories and, and tell more things they both tickle different um, different bones but if if you were to ask me the simple like just a flat out answer it would be pinups Uh, and in saying that, I would like to be a comic book artist uh, professionally, though. Just trying to figure out how this guy's breaking down the face. This is a really cool drawing that Chun Li's got too. Uh, and Brett's uh, just following up there, uh, saying, "I think pinups get boring after too long. You just want to do the interior storytelling." Yeah, like uh, if if you're a storyteller, right? If you'd like to be a storyteller, I mean, pinups can only do so much. That's the beauty I think most people come to comics for. I, I don't imagine too many people get into comics because they, they like drawing uh, a bunch of <laughs> still panels next to each other all the time, right? I'd have to assume most people get into comics because they love stories. You know, there's a flow in, in the, like to tell those stories or, or help in the construction of them, you know? Could be wrong on that. My own preference, yes. Like I, the main reason why I like to do comic pages is, is definitely for that. Uh, Un is asking, whatever happened to the three pager? I think he's talking about the uh, mini comic. Uh, well, what happened after that is, and I can't really get into it too much because there's some confidentialities here about it. But uh, I, w I was presented with some opportunities to um, potentially get some comic book work and the three page mini uh, was uh, an outlet for worlds in peril so that I could do my own stuff uh, but since it was done I have more time now to do personal projects so my focus has ha had to have changed because of that I know it's probably not the answer anybody's looking for but <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, by sharing some of the, my workflow with Castle Dracula that it'll alleviate some of that because um, I do love mini comics. I think a lot of you guys should be doing them too, uh, even though I just said I didn't do mine. <laughs> so this one's got like a little kind of a nub nose, but I'm just going to kind of... Uh, Americanize it, I suppose. Um, so you are currently doing comics that uh, NDA doesn't allow you to show or tell. Um, yes and no. It's such a, it's such like a backwards answer. Oh, and Brett's saying he just finished a mini comic. Congratulations, man. 
Did you learn a lot from it? So I'm just adding some elements here to Chun Li just to uh, again feeding off of the the reference. I'll actually bring it on here so you guys can uh, so you can see what the hell I'm talking about here. So this is the reference here. Uh, you can see it's it, there's like I'm, I'm playing with a different angle here. I'm pushing a little bit of stuff. I'm not going to get into the anatomy of it. I'm not concerned about that. It's just the faces. But uh, you can see where I'm playing things or maybe where I'm failing in certain areas or at least what my brain's telling me to add um, and, and, and things like that. Again, uh, <laughs> it'll probably come across again that I'm, I'm hating on the anime and stuff like that. But uh, there's there's certain things about anime faces that are anime, right? like that's the style. And I don't necessarily want to go full anime, but there's definitely definitely things I need and want to bring in from that. So you did a Power Rangers comic? Am I am I reading those abbreviations right? You're hitting all kinds of uh, bells and whistles on my side, bud. Do you mind sharing it with everybody, or is it uh, one of those, you got to pay for it to read it? <laughs> I know some people post it online, that's why. That's the only reason I ask. I don't think IDW does Power Rangers. Could be wrong. Oh, okay, so um, you guys that are watching on YouTube, check uh, facebook.com slash strong draws. S T R O N G D A, or sorry, D R A W S. I'm actually going to open that in the background. Go read a Power Rangers comic when I'm done. Thank you, sir. You're providing a great service. <laughs> See what else we got here. Yeah, Lars, was he here last week? Or last week we weren't, I wasn't even here. I feel like it's been a little while. If you're watching Lars, everybody says hi. They miss you and they love you in the chat. <laughs> Do some good old Akuma here. He's got a big old nasty Akuma. So he's got his back here. Big old massive arm. Some people are having uh, video problems. So let me know if uh, you guys can't see the video or whatever. I'll, I can do a refresh. Just breaking on the structure here of the head. That's another tricky thing too, trying to put structure down on styled art. I find, I, I don't know, or just art in general sometimes can be pretty tricky to find out where the sweet spots are to uh, break things down. I 
Oh, sorry, Art man. It seems like maybe your your internet connection is kind of poopy today. Or at least your connection to Patreon or um, Picardo. Or maybe just me. I don't. <laughs> hey, Matt, how's it going, bud? Outline here just to make it pop a little bit. It's going good, my man. I always like the way. I don't know if you. Do, is there any Street Fighter fans in here? Do you guys like the art style? Do you guys play the games? Am I alone? Cricket, cricket. Kuma's got this really cool design. This brow being just like... I don't know. It's just pretty cool. Awesome. Got some Street Fighter blood in here. So what's he doing with the mouth here? He brings us down and he shoots out that giant, giant jaw. This can't be a badass Shoto character without a massive jaw. Oh, right on, hon. That's cool. Uh, Millennium Man. Anyone upgrade to Windows 10 yet? My Among Studio 5 Photoshop runs better than ever on it. Pen sensitivity is perfect. I did lose audio on my PC for a few days, but a software update. Uh, no, I haven't. I mean, it's it's there. I'm kind of scared to do it, to be honest with you. Um, I've heard some people have the uh, negative blah, blah, blah. And I don't, you know what it is? It's really like I don't feel like if, if I do that and there is a problem, like I don't want to be stuck not being able to like work on a computer for a while but the more people like you that are brave souls <laughs> you come back with the reports that hey guys it's good to go see something here. Oh, feels weird. shot here. I think this one's bison. Let me try a little something different with this one here. Break with the pens.
got to find ways to sneak in more study time because there's, there's things in this that are just like, man. <laughs> I need more of this in my life. Matador is asking, Jonathan, can I ask how you come with a come up with a price on your commissions? Do you go by what is being requested or set price? Okay, so we're getting to the business stuff. All right. Um, usually the prices, uh, they when I first started doing it, like they might even still be low, honestly, compared to other people. Um, but uh, when I first started, I know I was very, very undercharging, like pretty much everything I was doing. Uh, and then I, I, I th what ends up happening is the more commissions I get. Uh, eventually I tend to increase the price um, not dramatically but just like over time and, and then I also try to compare myself to I guess what I see out there uh, if, I, if I feel like I can do just about just as good as the next guy doing what I'm doing uh, then I'll charge what they're pr charging if it's more than what uh, I'm currently at but but it's weird because I notice like unless everybody's increasing prices like there's this part where everything starts to stagnate and everybody's like charging a price that we should all probably get him paid more, you know. So I'm not sure if that answered your question or not, but essentially it's based off of what other people are 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 doing. And if I feel like I'll use other people that go to like conventions, I don't go to really any conventions, and I'm trying to change that. So I figure the people going to conventions and stuff, they're the ones that are in the trenches figuring out all this hard work uh, for guys like me and other people that don't really get out there and show art to people. Which could be horribly wrong. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, it's getting close to the end of the show, and like I said, if you guys had any commission or <laughs> uh, anything that you'd like critiqued, by all means, please uh, leave a chat or a link in the chat, and uh, I'll do my best to help you out. And don't be shy. I say this all the time, but uh, if you're brave enough to throw something out there. Uh, hopefully I can help you out, uh, but there's most likely somebody else that's watching on YouTube or somewhere else that can't make it in this time zone and stuff uh, that would benefit from it. So hopefully we can help a bunch of people out. Let's see if we can get some of this darkness in here. Uh, Matador is saying, finds himself subconsciously adding lines like the one I just added on this dude's jaw. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've talked about this. Like, I there's definitely something there, because I know other artists that do this as well, where you just sort of feel like picking up the pen in a certain spot as opposed to continuing a straight line, or just, you know, petting lines, or just adding more lines than you probably need. There's something there that's, uh, I don't know, I think that's just 
That's your brain, right? Like, it's, your. I, I find anyway, especially when I'm doing this stuff, like right now, it's just sort of like, there's, yeah, there's some line weights I need to worry about and blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, it's like pretty much on autopilot. And I'm just letting the brain do all the work. All the creative stuff I uh, already had to deal with to start up a drawing, right? This is all like, all right, well, let's see how your study's been going and let's see how you can bring it back into your art when it matters, you know. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, no, I didn't get the line weight tool figured out. Actually, um, I have this a note written down, but I haven't. I have not had the chance to follow up. Uh, give me one second here. So I can find it because somebody. Um, so I can grab it here before I keep just rambling on about. Hey Jessup, I'm just pulling up my to-do list here. Hey Prince, how you doing, Bobo? Uh, okay. Oh, here we go. I think I found it. So this was sent to me by Kevin Phillips. Uh, I don't know if you actually come to the show or not, Kevin Phil Kevin? Kevin Phil I was going to say the whole name. But uh, for those of you listening in on YouTube, um, search Manga Studio 5 Vector Layer Workflow by Kevin Phillips. I'm going to post it in the chat as well. You guys, I've already watched this video. Um, it pretty much explains anything I would do with it. Uh, except this gentleman prefers to work in vector. I know some of you do as well, so if that's the case, check it out. Um, so yeah, check it out. I just have I w what um, I was gonna make a video just telling people to go to that video. <laughs> oh no, Kevin! Yeah, he's uh, everywhere. He is a he's a very fantastic guy. He has sent me quite a few emails that have helped me out over the year, or I don't want to say, at least a year now. Maybe even close to two years. He's the old school kind of guy. Very classy. So we got about, again, uh, 12 minutes left, so if you guys had uh, any critiques you guys wanted help with or anything, by all means, hook it up. If not, uh, I'm just going to keep messing around with some inking stuff, man. And I'll tell you guys this, uh, I gotta really <laughs> bite the bullet and like pick a decision on like what I, what style I want to uh, be inking in. Because I love this right here, again the Freddy method I'll refer to it as. I, I find it's a little different, I, I work a little differently than he does with uh, this pen tool. You know like I'll go ahead and do more I think line weights and stuff with it and then go over top with like a proper you know, quill or whatever kind of brush and uh, tighten it up uh, and I get mixed results sometimes I re like it's just it speeds things up I get some really cool uh, results with it as well but uh, the other thing is just sticking mostly with like the G pen and just inking things that way and that's mostly how I've inked stuff on this channel that you guys have seen you know I, I, I think I get tighter artwork that way or maybe I'm just moving too fast with this pen. Not sure. Uh, what's that? Un says he's got a question. Uh, yep, this will definitely be on YouTube. Uh, what happens is I upload this right when we're done. 
And then on the weekend, uh, I hit the old publish button. Sometimes uh, having, I 100% agree. Right, like when I look at this, it's it's missing stuff unless I go in there and just start going ahead and adding like all the line weights and that. But sometimes I just want to kind of just <laughs> ink with that too, because I can feel like I can kind of knock out just different style, you know. Sometimes it feels quicker. Sometimes it feels like I don't know. I really don't know what I'm saying. I think this one I feel a little bit more uh, control, like I know where it's going because this is the sort of brush I think all of us start using when we go into Manga Studio. And I've been drawing a Manga Studio 4 too, like for a while. So it's kind of like the tool that are kind of kind there. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, how do you draw muscular heads? Like, who, um, hmm. What would be like a muscular head to you? Like a Captain America? Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like... Uh, like right even people like that okay so what I like to do when I'm drawing uh, heads here let's uh, get our pencil back uh, especially cats like bison here whatever it is there's certain things uh, usually it's uh, a jaw that's like the heroic kind of thing like usually people have like j like they're um, if you think of like Arnold Schwarzenegger we'll say as an example like in his prime these guys have such a low body fat percentage that there's no fat in the cheeks, you know, or your jaws, and and there's no like, even a, they don't even have like a little bit of a, a double chin, none of that action. It's just bone because there's no fat there. So you just start to see the muscles of the face. Like um, Arnold Schwarzenegger would be a perfect example where he's kind of got like this. Um, we're just gonna, I'm just spitballing this here. So you'd get the the muscle or like the bone and stuff you see, right? Because there's no fat, just muscle and bone. Um, so he's always got like this pronounced ridge. Guys, hey Jessup, one second. But they end up doing this sort of thing, and this is, you know, genetics with your mouth, right? The lips. But then they got this, it's the muscle that wraps around like this. Hey, buddy. And then they got the big chin, but then the jaw kind of like, like it goes in because it's wrapping around the bone, right? And this is just the skull, is all it is. Even this up here is the skull. Skull, right? Like it's all jaw. It's going up, and it's just like, this is the big muscle area. And sometimes, like, when you, if you, like, squeeze your jaw together, kind of like crunching your teeth together, I guess, you know, you'll get, like, this muscle right here that shows up, which is just, uh, like, this sort of shape. Again, it's another muscle that just gets flexed. I, I don't know where it connects. I think it actually connects up here, like that. If I, if I could be wrong. And, like, again, you get, like, the little pouch down here that's wrapping up. Right, so you get that, and then you know you can shade that in. It just makes them feel like they're a little bit more muscular. Uh, but for like Ryu and stuff like that, that's the one stage. The next one is, uh, for me, a lot of boxes or rectangles are are great for these kinds of characters. So if you're looking straight at like we'll say Ryu here, a lot of these characters are like heroic kind of things. So they've got a lot of perfection going on, like everything's placed almost proportionally correct all the time and, and, and humans tend to like things that are uh, proportioned and symmetrical that's why a lot of uh, heroes like Captain America and stuff they have the uh, idealized uh, features you know like right so you have like about, like this is pretty gross looking but <laughs> you have that and I would just kind of bring it in like this to the jaw and then you give them like the little ears in there, but like, and this is where you can just go ahead and add those muscles there if you wanted to. And he's got his headband and his hair, and then you give him like these big necks, big muscles. Kind of looks like snake a little bit with voluptuous lips. Um, and then like sort of again, I'll quickly just do like a side view. 
just kind of line things up. So an eye, and the bones kind of going around. You got your nose. The lips are, they don't go too, too far. Uh, you can get that little puff, that little ball here, you know, like of muscle if you wanted. But always make sure that their chin shoots out. And when it goes to the jaw, the jaw, I like to do this, I curve it back in and it makes the jaw seem like it's even bigger. Then you can put your ear here. Oh, let me turn that off. Sorry, guys. your neck. I mean like these are pretty gross drawings so sorry about that. Yep, so I mean hopefully that helped you out there. This up here with a face there. These lines feel a little too smooth. It's a really weird Chun Li. It's not. It's not good. It's <laughs> There's definitely some uh, some weirdness happening here. Uh, no, weirdness with uh, the drawing. The underdrawing is not sound. So I'm just quickly tossing lines in here. Uh, so far the Huons have been great. The only problem that I have, and I'll say it too when I do the, the last review there, is there's an area on there, on here, like uh, it's probably about, let's say this is the tablet. It feels like around here. Whenever I, whenever I do like a straight line, it'll do this. So I, I'll be drawing and I'll notice it and then I just kind of have to move my monitor over. Um, but really I only notice it when it's inking like that. Pencil work, it's pretty, pretty non-existent. Uh, if you, I will say if you are coming from like a Wacom Cintiq, there's a, a little different learning curve 
I suppose that I had the smaller Cintiq, um, but there's a little bit more of a gap between the glass and where my pen is hitting on the Huion. See, so you can see right there, like in that line, you see the dip there? I was in that sweet spot. But uh, yeah, so I have I had to get used to a little bit of where that that placement is. But for the most part, yeah, no, I, I don't even, I can't even tell the difference. Besides the squeaky pen that I have. <laughs> Uh, yes, I did, and uh, that was a whole cluster F, but eventually I got it to work, and I had to, or when I did, I reformatted my computer, and I uh, plugged this in before the Cintiq stuff, just to give it one last shot in case there was driver issues and stuff, that maybe made the last time I used it off or feel weird, and uh, none of them were there on that reinstall, uh, so I kept it on. Um, but yeah, like if if you are asking because you're interested in picking one up or you're kind of kind of hesitant on it, uh, I could you know whatever it's worth seal of approval it for sure. All right, and with that, you guys, I want to say thank you so much. Uh, you guys are the best, and I really do appreciate you guys coming out and hanging out with me for an hour here. Uh, if you guys came into the show a little bit late, this show starts every Wednesday from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you wanted to head on over to patreon.com slash shot director, there's a bunch of goodies on there. Uh, and there'll be more coming as well as uh, videos, hopefully starting n not this weekend. Next weekend I'll have a video up. That's what I'm trying to do anyway. Uh, starting the... It's not even gonna be like a, a hundred days make comics. So I'm gonna have like a, a a goal in mind of the whole thing. Uh, maybe I will just tentatively call it that, uh, but we'll see how that goes. And uh, I will say as well, I do have a convention that I'm hitting up, uh, a local one here in Windsor, Ontario, Canada. So if you're here, come on over on Sunday to this uh, comic book syndicate Syndicon. It's at Sinclair College. You guys can uh, check me out. Uh, I'll be doing sketches and uh, you know if anybody wants any pinups and stuff. I do have a few. Uh, prints made uh, and what I will do is after the show I will be putting them online for those that are interested uh, in that as well so thank you guys once again I do appreciate all the time and uh, you guys just being you keep doing that keep doing that thing keep being you guys alright guys thanks so much enjoy the rest of your night uh, if you guys are working on projects personal stuff kick its ass and uh, like usual you guys keep reading comics keep making comics and I'll talk to you guys very soon bye bye